Good morning. What you see in front of you is a political spectrum chart. You may be asking yourself, what is this political spectrum chart and how do I go about using it? And the answer to that is really pretty simple once you understand how politics work and where people fall on them. Uh, many of you have been taking your tests to, in order to go ahead and determine your scores, and you may not know what those scores mean, but those scores are going to fall somewhere on this political spectrum. So let's talk a little bit about what is political ideology, how does that fit into the overall cult, political culture that we have, and where does that fit you on this political spectrum. A political ideology is a set of beliefs, ideals, and principles about politics and how society should function. So take some of your big ideas, uh, uh, your key uh, points that people go ahead and argue about. Let's take gun control. Does government have a right to step in and regulate gun control versus uh, individual corporations and businesses doing that themselves? One side of the ideology would say that the government has a right and a responsibility to do so. The other side of the ideology would say that in doing so, the government is overstepping its bounds. Where you fall on your ideology depends upon your own personal beliefs and the things that have influenced you throughout your life. Those ideologies then proceed to build our political culture. Political culture is a set of values and ways of thinking about government and politics that are widely shared in a society. So, for example, back in the 1950s, prior to the massive civil rights movement, political culture said that black people and white people should be separated, hence how we received segregation as a political culture. After the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and to a, to a greater degree even now, we are now beginning to see that actually uh, people of all colors are should be welcome in all places. That would be a change in our political culture and a political culture of set of values that we now believe in today. So every person then can receive a political spectrum score, if it will, which is really just a system of classifying different political positions. So this is kind of like a, a range of where people fall in order to kind of determine how people think in similar or in different ways. So let's take a look at these different places on the spectrum. The first one we're going to look at is called a liberal, which is in the light blue box. This is a person who believes in group responsibility, government regulation, and is open to government aid to solve the problems in the country. For example, if people are poor and hungry, a liberal would believe that the government has a duty and a responsibility to help those people prop themselves up. A conservative, on the other hand, would be the exact opposite. They believe in personal responsibility, they want limited government, free markets, and typically follow traditional American values. So in the previous example of someone who was poor or hungry needing food, the a conservative would say that it is their responsibility, an individual's responsibility, to go ahead and prop themselves up. And that if the government goes ahead and takes care of their problems, there would be no incentive for that person to do so. Important to note that very few people believe fully in liberal viewpoints or fully in conservative viewpoints. Even people who are liberal or conservative still have some issues that they tend to follow on the other side or not believe in completely. However, if someone is truly split half and half and truly has some beliefs that they believe that are more liberal and others that are more conservative, we call that person a moderate. A moderate is a person who shares beliefs with both liberals and conservatives. There are also examples of people who are extreme conservatives or extreme liberals. An extreme conservative would be called a reactionary. And this person is someone who wants to not only prevent major change and, and government intervention, but actually go back the way things were in the past. You oftentimes will see uh, a lot of different um, fringe groups that are a part of this reactionary group of people. 
And just like a reactionary wants to go back in time, a radical wants to move very quickly through their own personal beliefs. This is what makes, the, makes a liberal to the extreme called a radical. We can see all of these different places on the spectrum based on a score. So a radical, for example, has a score of 0, 0.0. A moderate would have a score of 0, 0.5. A reactionary would have a score of about 1.0. A liberal would be about a 0.15, and a conservative would be about a 0.85. But notice that this is a scale. It's not a set finite number. So, for example, you may find somebody who has traditionally conservative beliefs, but actually for some reason because of the way that they feel on certain issues may have a score that makes them more of a liberal or moderate rather than the other way around. Most of us in the world fall into that moderate category. Different studies show different numbers, but approximately 10% of people fall into the radical category. Approximately 7% of people fall in the reactionary category. Approximately 20% of people fall into the uh, conservative category. About 23% of people fall into the liberal category, which leaves about 40% of us that fall into that moderate section. In the United States, many different people with similar ideologies have grouped themselves together into different political parties. These different political parties tend to go ahead and vote similarly and work together to get their particular ideals uh, approved. So on the conservative side, that particular political party that has been created is what we call the Republican Party. So the Republican Party tends to lean itself more conservative. That doesn't mean that a conservative in the Republican Party might not have particular causes that are more liberal, but overall as a whole, they tend to vote more conservatively. And on the other side is the liberal political party, which we refer to as the Democrats. So whether you are a liberal or a conservative, a moderate, a reactionary, a radical, a member of the Republican Party, or a member of the Democratic Party, you and your ideas fall somewhere on this ideology. And those ideologies collectively create your culture that you are a part of. So now the question becomes, those people who have been elected into office, where do they fall? And what does that say about our current political culture? So I hope you now have a better understanding of how the political ideology and the spectrum itself works. You see a lot of times that this goes ahead and creates animosity and friction between these different political parties. And it's really because people have different philosophy and ideas about what government is and what it should be for other people. So the question really is now, what do you think government should be? Based on your understanding of the Constitution throughout the semester, we hope that you're going to go ahead and be able to solidify your own ideology and what you personally believe about major issues that affect you every single day. And not just you, but every single person in this country. Have a great night. I'm Mr. Mayo.